Man, we're fired up. You said it. We're 17 days away from kickoff in Ireland. Florida State opens the season, opens conference play uh, against the Georgia Tech team, who really trending up with Brent Key over there. I'm a big fan of his uh, offensive line guy. You really start to see that come together for them last week of the season against Georgia. Quite a performance they put on on offense. And uh, we spoke a little bit earlier about the preseason poll, I think, last week. And honestly, I hadn't even looked at the one uh, that had came out that day. I was speaking to more of the different media polls that had came out over the summer. And a lot of those had Georgia Tech towards the bottom of the conference. Uh, well, it turns out they were voted number nine uh, by the ACC media preseason poll. So no slouch there. It's going to be a good test. Uh, but yeah, we're exactly halfway done with camp. We're 12 practices completed. Florida State is over in Jacksonville. They get over to the University of North Florida every single year for a two-day camp to just kind of, you know, build relationships on the team. You get two hots in a cot, you know, twin size mattress, bunk bed, whatever the case may be, uh, training camp, you know, esque in the NFL to get you out of your nice homes and things of that nature. Uh, in this era that we play in, in the NIL era, look, all these guys have, you know, probably 10, 15 grand in the bank or more, depending on what position you play what year you are, all those things of that nature. It's a little uncomfortable. Uh, it gets you out of your comfort zone. All you really have is your buddies uh, to crack jokes with and it's, and things of that nature. Uh, they played, um, I don't know if I mentioned this yet, but yeah, the weather was messed up. They ended up getting to play in the Jacksonville Jaguars practice uh, equipment or practice stadium over there due to the weather. UNF's field was kind of messed up. Uh, they get into the indoor facility and it's freezing cold in there. Everybody's instantly goosebumps after getting all suited up, dapped up, ready to go practice. Uh, Mike Norvell says, no, nah, we're not having that. Way, 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 way too comfortable in here. Uh, so they turn the AC off by about halfway through practice. It's, you know, whatever, 110, 150 degrees there in that indoor practice facility. And, you know, no rest for the wicked. Mike Norvell takes every chance he can to get this team uh, to battle adversity. One of the reporters after asked him, you know, like, I get you want to, you know, be prepared for anything, but your game against Georgia Tech, it's going to be like 60 degrees and damp over in Ireland. You know, he, he was right. You know, it was pretty funny to hear him say, well, look, we got to be able to adapt to any environment and whatever adversity comes along. Uh, you know, it could be 120 against Boston College. So it's just just some adversity. It doesn't mean necessarily that's what they're getting accustomed to for what they'll be playing week one. But. But yeah, uh, I'll let you choose what uh, kind of positions we start with. But as I said, kind of in the meeting, I could go for two hours on it. Uh, but yeah, plenty of fun stuff to talk about. I know Noel Nation is really worried about wide receiver. So we'll address that at some point for sure. Yeah, the same thing went through my mind that went through that reporter's mind. Uh, initially, I thought, well, yeah, Ireland, it's not going to be sweltering there. That's for sure. But at the same time, that's one game. And yes, oh yeah, I do live in the South now. And uh, <laughs> it's it's when you're in the North, it's usually, well, depending on where you are in the North, we can go all over the place. But uh, the first game, especially on August 31st, maybe the second game, it could be 92, 94 degrees, something like that. And then it's really maybe. And then you're looking at 75 the next week after that. But yeah hangs around in the South. So yeah, to, to gear up for 60 degrees one week would not be the smartest thing because yeah, it's still basically summer weather for quite a while after that, like real Mark summer weather. find out about the humid heat. See, it may be 92, you know, up in the Northeastern hemisphere, Northwestern hemisphere. And that happens sometimes, uh, but 92 uh, down here is a little bit different with that humidity. It's just a uh, boy. It's just on you. It's like, it's like being in a sauna, like really, I guess is the best best way to describe it. So, yeah, not for the not for the um, you know the faint hearted or whatever. Uh, so it was why it's pretty embarrassing back in the the Taggart area era for a Boise State team to come in and be better conditioned to you than you, given the kind of you know trial of fire you have there in front of you. But it goes to show you can really appreciate the little things uh, with Mike Norvell and kind of this culture that. Josh Storms and this whole staff has brought with them. Uh, we've got a real tough team and they're not going to, the elements aren't going to cause a win or a loss one way or the other with this team. 
We appreciate y'all being here at the Voice of College Football. This is our Wednesday show. We got George here, Renegade Report, and leave those comments and questions. All right. Fall camp. Only, yeah, we're about the midway point here, so we should have something out there. Uh, I, I stated this uh, at the outset of fall camp for everybody that the unfortunate thing is that most of the news we'll get is somebody went down somewhere and uh, we've had a couple of key injuries. Uh, our friends with the Florida Gators have probably lost their star running back, at least for the first game against uh, Miami, Montreal Johnson and uh, Nebraska lost its left tackle for the season a couple of days ago, but nothing, nothing, Negative to report there with injuries. Everybody stay healthy for a couple weeks here. So far, so good. I mean, there's some little nicks and knacks and things. They don't do an injury report. Mike Norvell, he's not going to say anything unless it's a injury for the season. So you're not going to get, you know, Timmy rolled his ankle. He's going to be out of practice for a week, things of that nature. So you're, I don't know if y'all could hear me knocking on wood. Yeah, thus far, we haven't had uh, anything new, major. Uh, everybody knows about the Destin Hill injury that happened. Uh, he's seen around practice, but he's got a white jersey on, which is like a next level from a green jersey. Like he's just he's throwing balls around, helping out, do, participating in some stuff. But coming back from an ACL, uh, we'll be lucky if we see him at any point this year. Malik Benson was a little beat up at spring, had a little sprain, maybe something like that. But he's back 100 percent. Marvin Jersey or Marvin Jones Jr. had been in a no contact jersey. Uh, I believe either today or the last practice was his, you know, he's finally got that off. So he's at full speed. Uh, you can see the difference now. He's out there dominating that race with the defensive line against Mike Norvell every day. Uh, but yeah, besides that, everybody's in uh, in good health but as far as I know. The one thing I will say for this show, George, is our Florida State fans uh, many times have to be a little tougher in this show because they get in a chat and uh, it's not like 90% Florida State. I'm seeing. Florida, Alabama, Michigan uh, represented here. So so there's a little uh, adversity there in the chat. So Florida Do State I need to fans, pull up the chat so I can uh, talk that talk and respond to these people? Are they talking reckless or what? Oh, there's just a couple low blows, a couple cheap shots there. Just one I, or two. I, I got smoke for Florida. I got smoke for Michigan. Whoever needs it, I got smoke for them. Well, yeah. So our buddy George... Uh, we we love George. George is phenomenal. But George roots for a team that, uh, man, I don't know when they're going to have a winning record again. It, it, I don't know. Because the one thing, George, as you well know, George. Yeah, do me report, for a loop for two seconds until I look down there. <laughs> the, <laughs> the, the thing that you know, uh, as well as I do, in talking about that Florida Gators uh, schedule. And, folks, we got a Florida channel. We had a great uh, conversation with Gators Breakdown just the other day is their schedule this year because of the way the SEC built it out. That's their schedule in the SEC next year too. They just play all those teams. The road just becomes the home and the home becomes the road. So I don't know that Billy Napier can catch a break. Uh, so George, I don't know if you want to be picking on uh, the Knowles considering the way this series has gone the last few years. Yeah. Billy Napier has a tough row to hoe. He came into a situation without COVID, and this is what I've said all along, that was very similar to what Mike Norvell inherited. It was going to be a long-term rebuild, kind of a really crappy situation for different reasons, uh, but that's kind of the track. Now, the third year for Mike Norvell ended up 10-3. and three. You had all the momentum in the world. We all know what happened. 13-0 and 0 followed up the next season. With that schedule that you mentioned, it's going to be really, really hard for Mr. Napier to win 10 games. Those last six games, I mean, like in the preseason poll, I think all five or six of the last six games are like top 15 teams. <laughs> you know, Texas, Florida State, uh, Georgia, on down the line. Uh, that Miami game for them is huge. Florida really, 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 really needs that Miami game. Miami's schedule, you know, it sets up pretty good. They've got a couple tough games, but they can lose that game and still win eight or nine games. If Florida loses to Miami, they're really, you know, they're worried about bowl contention. So, uh, you know, best of luck to you, Florida guys. I'm not going to kick you so hard when you're down. Uh, but as far as 63-3, to three, I mean, that's just – it's the most tired joke in, in all of college football. 
look at all the stats are out there. When you put up Florida State's two deep, their official depth chart that they put up for games, uh, there was like eight guys off the entire thing that played in that Georgia game. Uh, if you want to, you know, talk about their first string beating Florida State's third string, uh, whatever. If we all know what would have happened if the teams would have played. And the whole argument about, uh, you know, Georgia could have, you know, cried about not making the play. They lost their conference championship. They lost on the field. They, you know, they were out there for revenge. Florida State's team had nothing to lose. We saw what happened in the draft. Uh, and just just pay attention this year to what happens. Yeah, under those circumstances, I wouldn't even kick my worst rival uh, for 63-3 under those circumstances, unless somebody pushed me just to the hilt and I had nothing else to go for. But uh, – yeah, even Kirby Smart. Uh, I don't think we've ever heard a statement made like Kirby Smart made after that game because he was almost, I don't want to say he was embarrassed, but he was almost like, come on, guys. You guys know what the deal was. Mm -hmm. Do we really want bowl games to be this? He was pretty much like they didn't have their team. And <laughs> he was almost like, yeah, he addressed it. The elephant in the room. He's like, "Look, guys, we all know what happened out there. We know we all know it affected the game, you know." And that's what's damning. Look, I get it. The jokes are funny for a week or two, whatever the case may be. They've run their course. There's no doubt about it. Uh, think about it. Uh, when you look at similar times and careers, right around the time Dabo Sweeney went down there and got waxed seventy-three to whatever it was twenty uh, to West Virginia in a bowl game, and that was all his starters. That was pre-playoff era when bowl games mattered uh, as well. I mean, another story what he went and did after that. So bowl games, you know, whatever. We can move on. Everybody's got those games on their ledger. Everybody somewhere.